Hello, you Gretas and Chutes guys out there. Welcome to Unit 5, um, Section 17, Last 1, Sustainable Forestry. All right, so we've talked about how to grow our food sustainably, but now how can we forest sustainably? So forests are the key to global sustainability. Um, we're definitely having increasing demands on the world's forests for food, fiber, fuel, um, food, and more ecosystem services. Annual, annual demand for what alone is expected to triple by 2050. Um, we, we don't have it, so we need to come up with a different way to do this. So we have three ways. We have natural, semi-natural, and plantation. The benefits of sustainable forest management, um, one, there's that social aspect. It, the industry directly employs 14 million people. That's a lot of jobs. And the forests directly affect the livelihood of about 20% of the world's population are doing something involved with forest directly. And that's not just the indirect. The products and energy. So raw materials for a huge variety of goods are all renewable and wildly, widely recyclable. Um, wood is the most important source of renewable energy. And it, because you can plant more trees as long as you're doing it at a sustainable rate. Um, and this actually represents about 10% of total primary energy supply. And then we also have carbon storage. Leaves store about 1%, branches 11, the stem is 62, and the roots are 26% of the carbon stored. So phenomenally effective and cost competitive. This is a natural carbon capture and storage system. So one of the things we can do to reduce the amount of CO2 in the air is just plant more trees, lots of trees, all the trees, plant trees. Um, Forest carbon stocks are about 27 times the world's fossil fuel emissions, so more trees. Um, but we are re removing, a, they remove about 700 million tons of CO2 annually. So we need to keep, keep them. Um, so where does the carbon go? Like I said, about 1% into the leaves, 40% into the trunks and branches, 13% to the two, you've got woody debris. Um, soil and organic matter take a lot of carbon. Um, you're gonna put a little bit back into the air, but you're gonna pull out more into this. So the total, total ecosystem carbon is about 80 tons of carbon per acre. So once again, plant trees, fix the carbon. Um, biodiversity, look at all the critters. Um, forests are home to about 80% of terrestrial biodiversity. Managed forests reduce pressure on natural forest, so then they can just kind of do their thing. And it also helps, there's a need to connect those fragmented ecosystems. So if you have those um, corridors that can connect them, then the animals are happier. Water, um, like in your wetland areas, controls floods and droughts, reduces erosion, protects watersheds, and forest catchments supply about 75% of the fresh water. So definitely important. There's a cool video, the notes, or the link is in your notes. Um, looking at sustainable logging. It is possible and this is how to do it. So then we're going to go on to mitigate deforestation, how we can stop the forest from being cut down. Um, one, reforestation, plant trees. You can use them by wood harvested by ecologically sustainable forestry techniques. And you can see that when you purchase your wood um, or I've even seen matches that were sustainably harvested. You there's just a little sign on the thing or furniture or whatever you're buying. It says this was used with sustainably harvested wood. Um, or you can reuse wood. Um, maybe I've seen people turn old dresser drawers into a planter. So instead of just throwing out something that's wood, maybe you can find another use for it. Um, we also need to work on protecting forests from disease. Integrated pest management is a really good way to do that or selected removal of affected trees. If you pull the affected trees out, hopefully whatever the parasite, fungus, insect is won't spread anymore. Fire management. Um, fire is a natural process. The, it does help with nutrient cycling. So it's gonna liberate all those nutrients tied up in the dead biomass. Um, and it does help with regeneration. It openings provided for those early successional species, the, the more simpler things, or the shade intolerant trees that would grow up. Um, you can do what is called a prescribed burn. This could be your job. You're literally setting fires. Um, so dead biomass builds up when the fires are suppressed. 
And if the little fires don't happen, large wildfires may um, rage out of control. Back in the 80s, when I was a kid, um, Smokey the Bear said, only you can prevent forest fires. And they were really, really big about people not making fires and starting forest fires, which was great until all that dead biomass built up. And then in 1988, about a third of Yellowstone burned because they had not been doing the small fires. Small fires, good. Big fires, bad. So California wildfires, and look, this isn't even including the last few years when they've been awful. Um, so with climate change, you're getting more heat and you're getting more drought and you're getting more wildfires. So it's always been a thing, but not to the extent that we've had in the last 10, 20 years. So it's getting hotter and drier in California, which is a nice setting for wildfires. Um, a lot of it is dry, but not necessarily in drought, but we do have some areas that are in drought. Um, dead trees are great fuel. So once again, here's a picture of all of that. So in 1969, the National Environmental Policy Act mandated that you have to have an environmental assessment of all projects that involve federal money or permits. And then here's a whole bunch more laws and acts that um, were underneath this one. So you can have what's called an EIS, an environmental impact statement. And I've seen that show up on FRQs before. So when you have an EIS, it's going to outline the project scope and purpose and describe um, the environmental context of it. So whether you're building a mini mall or a new CAFO, whatever you're doing. Hey, we're doing this and it's going to have this, this impact on the environment. So it analyzes um, alternative approaches. Is there a better way to do this that is less negative to the environment? Um, you don't have to say the least impact possible, but what might be required is da -da -da -da, an environmental mitigation plan. So this is going to say, if this happens, this is what we will do. So how environmental impact issues will be addressed. They may need to apply protection measures of the Endangered Species Act, because if something lives in the forest you want to cut down, you, you can't. Um, and then public comments and concerns often influence decisions, but not always. Um, there's another article and a couple of videos in your uh, packet that you can look at, but you have survived the wonderful world of Unit 5. We are done with notes. Before we go, I want to let each and every one of you know that you are good enough, you are smart enough, and people do like you. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good God, do your homework.